afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the World History Quarter 3 content training for today. My name is Cicely Williams. I will be your uh, trainer for today in our webinar. Um, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to our quarter three world history training. During our last session together, we focused on the importance of spiraling to mastery, keeping the content on students' radar through questioning, connecting content from one lesson to the next, and of course, through DOL and TE items. Today, we will focus on continuing to help students learn as historians throughout the school year to ensure student mastery. Please use the QR code or bit.ly shown on this slide to access the participant guide. The participant guide is a forced copy and you will have access to the activities and handouts during our sessions. Other materials will be distributed as needed throughout the session. Also, if you can send in the participant guide to my email to receive full credit if you are on the webinar, I would really appreciate that. Next, let's meet the Social Studies Department's small but mighty team under the leadership of Dr. Elena Hill. We also have our director, Shalon Bond, our elementary coordinator, Mary Athena Newton, our middle school coordinator, Irene Lyons, myself, Cicely Williams, the high school coordinator, Shirley Still, our social studies coordinator, Graham Stevens, our project manager, and we also have a picture of our administrative assistant, Martha Castillo. Feel free to contact our department if you have any questions or need any type of additional assistance. In addition, we also have in our social studies department, our ILCs, Instructional League Coaches, district-wide. Region one, we have Sabrina Green. Region four, we have Bilal Khalid. Region two, we have James Hutchinson. And all three support regions three and five collectively. As we start to get prepared for our PLC, our PD uh, training for today, um, I'd like to just set in a few norms and community agreements. Take care of yourself and needs. Be fully present. Be vulnerable. Be mindful of other learners. Assume a positive attitude and intent. Now that we have our norms and agreements set in place, let's refer to our agenda. First, we are going to go through a little activity where it's historians or influencer. Then we're going to segue into practice makes perfect. And then last but not least, implementing the practice. Before we dive into the actual um, presentation, let's revisit our core values, our district-wide core values, which include effective instruction. Our tier one instruction will yield on or above grade level achievement. Two, equitable access and outcomes. All at-risk students will succeed with equitable access and opportunity. And last but not least, excellence. We are committed to continually pursuing excellence. In addition to our core values, the Social Studies Department also has uh, created and established our own vision and mission statement. Our vision is that all Dallas ISD students think critically, engage civically, and connect globally. Our mission is providing intentional support and growth opportunities in social studies. Along with our vision and mission uh, statement for social studies department, we also have a social studies department philosophy. Social studies is vital for students to understand who they are, and how to best navigate their lives by making decisions as confident, knowledgeable, and civically engaged members of society. With that in mind, I would like you to pause the video and I just want you to kind of brainstorm and think about how are you utilizing the philosophy or the components of the philosophies in your class?
You may begin the video when you have already self-reflect on this philosophy and bringing it to life in your classroom. And let's start with the big question. Why are we here? What are we doing here? Why are we forced to, to are be being asked to come to a training, this specific training today? We are here because it is our job to inspire and to get students excited about processing historical information in our classroom. With this in mind, we are responsible for creating responsible citizens who are ready to make informed decisions. How are we going to do that? That's a good question. We're going to simply do that by teaching students to think like a historian. What makes the PD different? Well, the social studies department has adopted tools that will help students with thinking like a historian in Dallas ISD. If you are doing the heavy lifting during class, you are doing the learning. How can primary sources help us know the truth? I want you to think about that question. We're, we're saying think like a historian, but how can primary sources help us know the truth? So pause the video for a few seconds and think about how can primary sources help us know the truth and rejoin us. I'm going to move along and reveal possible ways primary sources help us know the truth. The first one being because they were created at the time of a historical event. It also gives an idea of what historical actors thought about the events that they were living through. A current focus on disciplinary literacy has brought primary sources back. So bringing in those disciplinary literacy skills. And then they respond to the mistaken belief that by using primary sources, you can avoid controversy and bias. So what is our focal point? Where our objective for today is, I am applying HIPPO, OPTIC, and 4QM to equip students with the vital tools to think as historians. I will know that I've met that full goal by meeting three successful success criteria. I can differentiate the difference between a historian and an influencer. I can use HIPPO, OPTIC, and 4QM with district provided resources. I can implement HIPPO, OPTIC, and 4QM during quarter three to ensure students think can think like a historian. Revisiting our learning objective, applying HIPPO, OPTIC, and 4QM to equip students with the vital tools to think as historians. All right, I'm going to have you do a little task, and this is also in reference to your participant guide. So you have access to this. So this is an activity that you're going to do on your participant guide. Remember, you're going to email it to me at C. S-I-G-U-E at DallasISD.org. You will have one minute to carefully examine the three photos to answer the following question. What difference or differences do you notice between the bridges? And then why do you think there's a difference? So why, why is it? Make that inference. Pause the video, take a few minutes to think and reflect. Do not cheat. Do not go and Google. Okay, now that you are back, the real truth about this is that all three are the transitions of the London Bridge. Yep, the nursery rhyme, London Bridge is falling down, comes from this um, simple saying, London Bridge. The first image is the old London Bridge, which once had homes and chapels built on top of the bridge. Hence the nursery rhyme, London Bridge is falling down and Humpty Dumpty who kept falling on this great wall. 
So this bridge experienced a lot of trials and tribulations, um, a lot of triumphs, <laughs> but also trials, challenges during this time. Um, many of the homes were burnt down if they were invaded. Uh, it, it just became overcrowded. And so therefore it led to the tearing down of the 1209 bridge, the old London bridge, and what was classified as now in 1831, the new London bridge. This new London bridge completely erased the homes that once were located on top of that bridge. And now people can travel. It was a two lane bridge that allowed people to travel along the bridge. The 1972 bridge was developed because of the demand for a larger bridge, more lanes. So that new 1972 bridge enlarged to three lanes and the 1831 bridge was actually sold to a state in the United States, Arizona. So this is just a little interesting historical facts about the London Bridge and the long story of London Bridge. I do want to ask this question. The reason why I went with this is because I wanted to know why is it important for us to know the complete accurate story? You got it. Historical context provides details and clarity surrounding sources and events. So with the historical context and with the information that I have provided you based on the research that I have conducted about London Bridge, you now understand a whole story. You can give me the whole story behind the London Bridge. Promise I'm going somewhere with this. Bear with me one, one second. I want to dive into your brain just one more time. I have another question for you. So definitely take a pause after this. What is the difference between a, a historian and an influencer? What do you think? On your participant guide, I'd like for you to create a list. What's the difference between a historian or an influencer? I'm going to jump into now sharing some of the differences that are spe specific to Dallas ISD. Historians typically analyze different source sources. Specific to Dallas ISD, we have uh, a historian toolkit to gather information, which includes 4QM, Hippo, Optic, and Artifact Analysis Sheet. Something else that typically done is done as historians is identify biases, point of view, credibility. Compared to an influencer who typically reference and use social media, they also tend to establish their own brand. They may even search for other brands and trends. And we'll talk about why they may do that. Uh, some of the tools and the equipment they may use is camera, lighting, uh, fashion. And then last but not least, in terms of an educational influencer, they may use teacher pay teachers. While neither one of these is preferred over the other, because influencers typically happen regardless in the classroom. We are naturally influencing the kids that we see on a daily basis. But the big difference between the two is that one gets the facts and the other one sells a perspective. Influencers typically gives all the information and limits the amount of time for a student to digest and analyze the information, or shall I say, gather the facts. Think like a historian. You want to spend about roughly maybe 10 to 15 minutes doing the influence side, given the background information, given the prior knowledge via lecture, video clip, or just a brief secondary source 
overhead reading. But you wanna spend the bulk of the time allowing students to dive into those primary secondary sources because those sources tell the whole story. They tell the entire story and it allows the students to think critical to pull the story together. I get it, I get it. This may be challenging sometimes to, to, to get students to think to this level or it may not be as challenging at times. Either way it goes, today's session, we're gonna dive into opportunities and ways we can allow students to think critical and think like historians. Keep in mind, I wanna repeat it again, both the influencer and the historian are both needed to ensure students are learning history and providing students the opportunity to learn history. All right, guys, we now finished the first success criteria, the first section. I can differentiate the difference between a historian and an influencer. Let's move on to our second session where we are going to section where we're going to actually practice. Perfect. Before we dive into practicing perfect, what makes perfect, we will focus on quarter three content. Based on the district-wide historical data for quarter three, we will focus on the Industrial Revolution. Now, I know we do see other SEs that are, are, are a little bit lower than 0.8a. However, those other SEs cover quarter four material. So please stay tuned for quarter four training. In terms of our honors result, we're going to focus on ding, 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 what our session is actually about today. So 28C focuses on the historical context, point of view, analyzing primary and secondary sources. So if we actually teach these students how to think like historians, we can definitely boost up this SE. Let's get ready to dive into the lesson. The lesson, like I said before, is going to be on industrial revolution. Let's begin by looking at one of the district provided resources. I will model how to use optic for the hook portion of the lesson. I'm gonna step out of presentate, presentate, presenter mode, and I'm gonna step into a teacher's lens. So I'm gonna actually model a think out loud. So follow along with me. Now I'm into teacher's mode. We're gonna first start with the title. Title is very obvious, right? We're gonna start with the title because that's the first easy thing to pull out is the title, Industrialization in Dubai, which simply means new technology, technological changes led to urbanization in, in Dubai. Or we just see a whole bunch of technology taking place during this time. The second part after we find out the title is, let's look at the parts. The first part I notice is the dates. So after the title, I've also noticed the dates. The image at the top says 1970, the image at the bottom says night, it says now. The image also at the top has a smaller building versus the image at the bottom that has taller buildings. The image at the top is in black and white and the image in the bottom is in color. And what I've noticed based on this image is these different parts. Now that I have gathered the title and the parts, let me put this all together to kind of see what connections and interrelationships that they have. Well, based on the dates, the different buildings, the color, the title, it basically kind of tells me that Dubai develops into a more industrialized city. It looks more urban, urbanized. It looks like an urban center versus 1970s, it looked real rural. What's the overview? This image basically is about the drastic industrial changes in Dubai from 1970 to now. 
And then now that I have the overview, I can also get the conclusion. Dubai has become more industrialized as a result of several factors. Because industrialization, I remember, comes from more than just one factor. It can be a political, economic, or a social. Unfortunately, this image does not go into detail. I would definitely have to access my prior knowledge to give more information. So because this is just a little activity, a hook activity, I'm not gonna go into great detail of the other factors of happening that's happening during this time that led to the shift and change. But feel free to definitely go into that detail with your students. Now, if you have not modeled optics, if you have or have not already modeled optic before, what you could do instead of giving them the full optic, you can have students just identify the title and the parts first. That's it. But remember, you should always model your expectations before your students are actually doing the assignment. You always want to model first. I'm gonna now transition into my second model and model how to complete the new learning. The Industrial Revolution background. I am not gonna read the full Industrial Revolution background. It is also on your participant guide. Please take time to read it. What I am gonna do is I'm gonna go straight into the model aspect. And I'm gonna start with the historical context. The historical background is industrial revolution in 1750 to 1840. It's right there in the passage. The intended audience, it's not really clearly stated because there's no actual author. This is a secondary source. So because there's no author, but what there is, is um, a title, it kind of tells me a little bit about the intended audio. So this is more of a, a reading for uh, someone seeking information on, uh, on text. So it's an informational text. For the point of view, I do see at the bottom, it doesn't have the author, but it has something that says by active classroom. So I'm assuming it's some sort of educational resource. So that lets me know that this is like, in, once again, informative, and it's an educational resource. The purpose is embedded throughout because it's talking about the changes that were led by the industrial revolution, the changes in, in the technology, the changes from one cash crop to the next cash crop. And the outside information is where a student will active, activate their prior knowledge. So maybe based on a previous lesson, the student may make a connection, but the big thing about that outside information is that it is not inside the passage. So my connection is, is European imperialism and colonialism allows Great Britain to move into a more industrial society by purchasing pro certain products from India, Egypt, and uh, the US colonies during this time. Now, once again, if you have not modeled HIPPO with your students, here's another opportunity to embed a scaffold. This scaffold includes background questions. It also allows them to preview the vocabulary before they dig and dive into the reading. And if you preview the vocabulary before diving into the reading, it will help clarify that those misconceptions. This is also good for your uh, emerging bilinguals. Um, this is also really, really good for your students that may struggle with vocab. 
to preview the vocabulary words before. Now that we have completed and I've completed the model for optic and hippo, it's your turn to practice oppo and hip, hip, op, I'm sorry, oppo, hippo and optic. So instead of jigsawing, what I'd like you to do is I want you to take a few minutes to dive into the different documents. Document one, two, three, four. And based on what document you have, you're either gonna do a hippo or you're either gonna do an optic. Hippo is typically used for uh, text information and optic is typically used for visuals. You're gonna follow the same procedure I just did. And once you gather the information of optic and hippo, you're gonna write a one sentence that summarizes that document. This is also on your participant guide and you do have space to put that information there. So please pause the video and I'd like for you to work on that and join us back when you're finished. All right, now we're gonna transition into, welcome back. We're gonna transition into the next part of the lesson called the independent practice. So now that you've gathered all this evidence, you have the background information. Now that you have also gathered uh, evidence from the documents and the resources, the primary and secondary sources, your next step with your students would be having them complete a four QM, four question on industrialization, and they can explain the impact industrialization had on the world. Quarter question one. It's a narration. So simply, what happened? Question two, you can use the documents to be able to say what these people during this time were thinking when they did these things. Then the third question is that about the time, the setting, the historical context. Why did this industrialization revolution take place then and there? And then fourth, what do you think about it? So here's where students can make some connection into what they actually thought about this document, this topic. What do they think about the Industrial Revolution? They may even bring in some information from the hook to add in what they think about industrialization. They might even connect some of the things that's happening here in Dallas as well. That number four is for their for students' judgment are for your judgment. Give it a go and try to create a little brief paragraph. And then come back when you're done. I'm gonna go ahead and transition to our next part, which goes into what we just did was a tier one lesson. We also have tier two, which is active classroom. And I've also put on your participant guide, if you click the link and log into Clever, you have to log into Clever to access either one of these, Discovery Education and Active Classroom. I've also given you a, a specific tier two uh, lesson for Industrial Revolution. Please take time to view that. Yep, now we have successfully met the use of Hippo, Optic, and 4QM with District provided resources. Let's go into our next step, our part of planning, implementing. Implement these practices. I'm gonna ask you to kind of do this part like almost like a mini PLC. It would be great if you can collaborate with a peer um, at your own time or take this back to your campus. And that is, I want you to look at quarter three topics. Look at the different topics. <laughs> Other than the Industrial Revolution, because we've already done that, um, I would like for you to go into any other topic for quarter three, and I want you to select one topic that you would like to utilize and bring in any one of these Thinking Like a Historian tools. 
Which quarter three lesson will you use the Thinking Like a Historian Toolkit in your classroom? Once again, there's room on your participant guide to answer this question. So I want you to plan and think about where could you use this? As you think, as you start to plan, it is gonna take some time. Once you have planned, you should be able to now meet the success criteria. I can implement Hippo Optic in 4QM during quarter three to ensure student mastery. That concludes our training. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It was a pleasure and an honor having you guys.